Last week, we told you how a hospital had apologised to the mother of a baby who died in its care. Chelsea and Westminster said the death last year had brought significant changes in its maternity services. But tonight, we report on a similar case two years earlier, when the hospital made exactly the same promise. Ran Hunter died at just 12 days old. His parents say they were mocked by midwives when they raised their concerns before their son's birth. Katie Oakes has their story. It's one of few family photos from Rand's short life as they tried to explain to his older brother that he wouldn't survive. He was proud as, proud as punch of his little brother. He really was yeah. not obviously understanding that he was so terribly ill. Yeah. But then obviously having to help him through his grief while we were in a complete state, I have to say, has been tough. Katie went to Chelsea and Westminster Hospital at 37 weeks pregnant, worried about her unborn baby. She said a midwife ignored her concerns. She kind of rolled her eyes and said, the baby is pro probably absolutely fine. And I said, well, I, I was just a bit worried because my husband, um, he's, a, he's a consultant, he's a doctor, and he, he listened because he said that I didn't look right and he was worried. He listened to my tummy and could hear the baby's heart rate. And she said, well, what are you worried about then? If you can hear the heart rate, the baby clearly isn't dead. But further tests found a dangerously high heart rate. A registrar was called, but the on-call consultant wasn't. Her husband, a consultant at a different hospital, was at home with their eldest son. You have to sort of trust your colleagues to do their jobs and know what they're doing, really. Um, and I guess that's the thing I beat myself up about in terms of I wasn't there and maybe that could have made a difference. Van was finally delivered by caesarean section 12 hours after she first arrived. He died 12 days later from brain damage suffered in the womb. The hospital's chief executive says a thorough investigation was carried out into the circumstances around Mrs Hunter's delivery and that lessons here at this hospital have been learned. But two years later, in March 2015, another very similar case raises the question about how well those lessons were ever learned. Jinta de Gutierrez's baby died at four hours old after long delays moving her to the labour ward and a failure to properly monitor them both. We're putting our doctors and medics under an enormous amount of pressure and in that situation it's not surprising. It's tragic but it's not surprising that mistakes sometimes happen. They say they don't know how poorly their son would have been but say fewer delays would have given him a far better chance of survival. Katie, there was a major review into changes into maternity services in England last week. Could those recommendations stop things like this happening? Well, firstly, it's worth noting that what's happened to both these women is uncommon, but what's clear is that they both suffered from a system that on those nights seemed under strain. Now, this major review into maternity services has suggested a different approach, that pregnant women will be given control of their own maternity budget of around £3,000, and they could then use that to make their own decisions about how and where they receive care. They could appoint their own midwives, decide which hospital, or whether to use a private company offering home births. It was commissioned in recognition that some of our NHS maternity services aren't as safe as they should be. There's still more than a thousand stillbirths each year. It's just a review at this stage, but it recognises that we do need to find a way to do more to prevent deaths like those I talked about in my report. Katie Oakes, thank you very much. Thank you.